First Kings chapter 17. And starting from verse 10. Now I'm going to read very quickly, please, so we don't take much time. So please follow with me. All of you love English. All of you for going to HSC next week for English. This is a good chance to learn the language. Beautiful language of English. Especially the King James Version. Okay. First, stop it, Lily. First Kings chapter 17. And if Lily and Bridget can follow, that would be wonderful. Starting from verse 10. Talking about the prophet of God, Elijah. So he rose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I might drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I might go and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. What a wish. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me. And after make for thee and for thy son, for thy saith the Lord O God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And then the story continues that she did as he told her. And then let's go to verse 18. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remember, remembrance and to shy myself? I'm sorry, we have to do 17 first because the son dies in 17. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto him, whatever she said, and verse 19, And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom, and carried, carried him unto a loft, where he abode, that means slept, and laid him upon his own bed. And then he did a miracle. And finally, verse 23, And Elijah took the child after he was revived again, and brought him down out of the chamber into her house, and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, Thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that you are the man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. Okay? Have you heard the story before? Yes. Yes. Very simple. A widow living in a certain village. Elijah comes. There's famine all over the place in Israel. There's no food. There's no drink. And he was thirsty and hungry. And God told him to go there, and the woman will feed him. And he, went, he came to her and said, give me something to drink, give me something to eat. And she said, I have nothing, look at us, so skinny, so hungry, I have a little bit, but I'm going to fix it for myself and for my child. And after this, after we eat, guess what's going to happen? We're going to die. It's simple. What an answer, we eat and die. But God changed the situation. The man of God said, don't worry. He and he, they ate all of them, but later on the child died, and she was so upset. But the man of God went and revived the child by the will of God and gave it back to her again. Okay, let's put this story aside for one second. We'll go back to it again. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. 1 Kings, then can come 2 Kings. Joseph. Okay, Second Kings chapter 4, and we start so that we, okay, let's, I'll, I'll go quickly through the, but I'll omit some verses, and from verse 8, and it fell on one day that Elisha passed to Shunem, there was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread, and so it was. That as oft he passed by, he turned in dire to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive thee, this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and candlestick, and it shall be, when he comes to us, he shall turn there tighter. And it fell on a day that he came there, and he turned into the chamber, and lay there. And he said to Jehazi his servant, Call this Shunammite. And when he had called her, he stood before him. And he said unto 
him. Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is to be done for thee? Wouldst thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And she has he answered, Verily, she has no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he called her, she stood in the door, and he said, About this season, according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, thou, thou man of God, do not lie unto thine handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at the season that Elisha has told her, according to the time of life. Let's skip some verses and then go to verse... Uh, it's okay, we'll continue. And when the child was grown, he fell on a, it fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head! And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, be, be, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut, shut the door upon him and went out. Let's go to verse 27. 27. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, but she has came near to her. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Didn't I say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Jehazi, Gird up my loins, and take my stuff in thy hand, and go the way. If they meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute thee, answer him not again, and lay my stuff upon the face of the child. The story continues later on, that Elijah, the, Elijah, the man of God, does another miracle, and finally it's, it says in verse 34, uh, uh, there's 34, and he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands and he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked into the house to and from and went and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he called Jehazi and said, Call this human. So he called her and when she was come unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took her son and went out. Okay? Two stories. Simple to understand? I don't think it's very difficult. One story for a woman who meets a man of God, has a child, but the child dies. Another story, a woman who meets a man of God, doesn't have a child, but the man of God asks from God to give her a child. She conceives a child, but later on after he's grown a little bit, he goes out with his father to work in the field. The son hits him. He gets sick and he dies. So the scene is one. Death and death. Fear of death is there. It happened. And fear of death here, it's happened. Who is not scared from death here? Death is a scary thing. You're all still young. You want to live your life. And I'm sure if death walks in from this door, everybody will run away. Scared from him. You don't want him to say, hey, come, let's go. I need you. No. You want to live more. But in these two cases, the same scene of death, but the same also presence of the man of God there. Let's take the first one. The widow. The widow, first of all, was busy with herself. Fear of the future. No food, nothing to do. What am I going to do? Trying to clean the floor. Maybe she can get 10 cents or 20 cents from someone to buy something. Fear. How many people fear what they're going to eat tomorrow? Lots of people. Don't think that if you live in Australia, that life is good, LG. No, that's an air conditioning. Life is good because Australia is advanced compared to other countries. But in so many places in the world, life is not good. Firstly, they don't have air conditioning. They don't have food to eat. You know, I met families in India Christians who live on one meal of meat a week. <coughs> a week. Seven days, they eat meat only once a week. And the rest is vegetables because they don't have money to buy chicken and meat. Now, some other places probably they don't see meat probably once a month. But here, we enjoy the blessings that God has put in this country.